Preach and Play Live, where we focus on minister training and media training, including video and audio technology. We also train musicians in music technology and learning to play the piano and organ. Get ready for your live class with Pastor Casper Corder. Okay, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Casper Corder coming to you with another audio tip on today. On today, we're going to be breaking down for you the Prasonis Studio Live 24.4.2. This is the audio console that I made the choice to purchase. Um, I don't know when I bought this thing. I bought this thing years ago, but the reason I bought it was because one, I bought this fader because it didn't have um, 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 uh, motorized faders. At the time, because of the work that I was doing, because you know, I was doing my mobile productions. I was showing up doing church conferences. I was taking my audio console here and there. I didn't want one more thing, um, one more thing that would that would potentially break on me. So I chose not to buy a console with motorized faders. Um, so that's the first reason that I bought this console. But the second and most important reason that I bought this console, because this console is extremely durable. The Prasonis 24.4.2AI um, is an extremely um, rugged, well-built console. Um, um, if I had to choose again, if I was going to purchase this console and if I had to choose if if I was going to recommend this console for any church that I do consultation work, the only reason I would tell the church um, to buy this console would be for one of two reasons. The first reason, if the church was mobile if the church was portable and they just wanted to buy an inexpensive mixer that was durable, that could take bouncing up and down the road, going in and out of venue, I would tell them to buy this one for that reason. But the second reason, because now you can buy that console inexpensively. I don't like the word cheap because that that talks about quality. There are better options sounding audio quality mixers that are built cheaply. <laughs> this console here is not built cheaply. It is a great investment if you need durability and if you need something that is inexpensive. But there are more reasons why moving forward, I personally would not buy this mixer again. And I would not recommend, and there are reasons in some situations where I would not recommend a church purchase this console if they have the budget to get something different. There are other consoles that I would recommend in normal situations if they have a budget to spend a little bit more. And I'm going to talk about those things in a minute. But if churches many times have a budget to buy something like, and I'll show you some 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 consoles just in a second, because the cons because prices can go use seven eight hundred dollars all the way up to new ten and twelve thousand. So it depends on your budget. It depends on what you're trying to accomplish. I can help a church do a ten thousand dollar budget. Uh, or a $10,000 production on an $800, $1,100 budget. I know how to ball on a budget. I know how to do less with more. And I can tell churches how to do that. But you shouldn't have to, especially if you have the budget, go ahead and spend the money because you'll be so much happier in the long run, right? And so just real quick, that is that that's my initial 
thoughts about this con uh, about this console because of my personal personal experience. Every single thing that you see me do at preachandplay.com is running through this Prasana Studio Live 24.4.2 AI. If I've come to your city, if I've done your church conference, if, if I've many people have shown seen me show up with this console. And it is great, um, not only for that, because it's real simple. It's real simple for you to, you know, take your iPad and you can be on your iPad and you can be walking around now, muting, unmuting microphones, listening to the sound of the room, listening to, you know, the, 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 the praise team rehearsal, the band rehearsal, and you're engaged. You can be up on the stage listening to the stage monitor. Oh, the red mic wants their mic turned up. It's real easy. There's some software that you can get that will be on your iPad or, or you can walk around with your laptop in your hand. All you have to do is like you can see my microphone right now. This is a representation of what the virtual software looks like. And it gives you the ability to remotely turn up or turn down the red mic. You can do that from your iPad. You can do that from your cell phone. In my situation at church, I even I even gave my drummer um, a password to the Wi-Fi network. I told him to download some some software. And when my drummer was playing the drums, he literally would have his cell phone mounted on the drums. The drums you see over my, my corner. Uh, I had a thing where he mounted his phone and he would turn up or down what he wanted in his ear from his phone. Going into the digital realm is so wonderful for churches. So if you're a church looking for upgrade, I'm going to quickly talk about the console that I have on yesterday or the day before I, um, I did a, a video on another console that I like that I'll show you in just a moment. It's called a, um, um, Soundcraft performer, um, version number three. I really like that one. It's very intuitive. It's bigger budget, but it's a great console. So, um, as you guys know, at preachandplay.com, we are striving to um, create musician content, but not only musician content, media ministry content so that your media ministry can train so that they can learn how to sound check, how to run the computer, how to put the scriptures on the screen, how to do this. We're creating content so that all of the ministry needs can be met. We are building an online library. So this is just another addition to that. And you can get content like this at preachandplay.com. On March the 1st, I am releasing all the pre-recorded content that I've been working on behind the scenes. I'm not doing any mu music live streams. I might do one towards the end of next week, the middle of next week, but I'm spending a lot of time recording music content, recording media content. Okay. And so be patient with me. I'll be back with some musician stuff coming up soon. Let's get into this without any further ado. Let me talk about the pros and the cons of the Prasonis studio live 24, 4.2. First of all, um, this console will give you 24 inputs. It will give you 24 inputs and it will give you 10 auxiliary output outputs to work with it will give you let me show you a different screen um let me do it like this it will give you 24 channels you have 24 surface faders you have four subgroups it allows you to let's just say that the uh, drums are one through eight i can send channels one through eight to subgroup number one that would be my drums I can take channels nine through 15. That will be the praise team singers. I can route them to subgroup two. And when the praise team gets done singing, I can either just hit mute on subgroup two, which will be the master fader for all the praise team mics, mute the drums, and then bring up subgroup four, which would be the preacher mic, right? You can group things to these faders so that once you kind of get these kind of set kind of, you know, at a, at a, at a, you know, kind of a, a nominal average range. You can just work with these, right? You have four subgroups and then you have, of course, the, the master out here, um, that you'll use. And so, um, 
in my situation, I've been able to make this work in churches for years, just with the 24 inputs into this mixer. It also, this mixer, where'd it go? There's a something I'm looking for. This mixer also gives you, um, let me show you the back of it. It also gives you, not only do you have the 24 XLR or um, TRS mic line in, it also gives you eight, I mean, excuse me, 10 auxiliary outputs. So that means you can take your, you can take this main left and right send to your main speakers, right? So that's the front of house speakers. And then if you got two monitors in the pulpit, let's just say aux output one and two will be in the pulpit. Let's say three, me on the piano, I, I always have stereo monitors. I don't want to listen to anything on the piano mono. I always put two on my piano, so I had two. So three and four was my piano wedges. Um, hey, let's just say five and six was the, let me start over because I done lost what I was saying. Uh, one and two, let's say would be, yeah, the pulpit. One and two would be the pulpit. Let's just pretend three and four will be the, uh, the praise team singers. If you got two monitors up there, or if you have, um, if you have, um, an in-ear system, three and four can be the praise team in ears. Five and six can be the drummer in ears. Seven and eight could be like an, if you want to send a discrete mix to, you know, another set of monitors, let's just say, um, you know, over by seven can be over by the bass player or seven and eight can be over by the bass player and the guitar, right? But you got to leave nine and 10 to send to your live stream if you're not running something like Dante, right? And so if you need to send an analog signal to another computer so that you can create a mix for live stream, you need nine and 10, right? So you need, you, well, you, you'll, you'll need this. You'll, you'll need, you'll need to do that anyway, but I'm just saying these are the analog outputs. Let's just say it like that, right? And so that's the main features that I want to talk about, not to talk too much about this. Technically, you basically have 10 auxiliary outputs so that you can so that you can create a mix of all 24 channels. You have 10 auxes to do that. Some people cheat. Um, some people cheat sometimes and they send something to these subgroups to route out to a speaker, but you're pigeonholed when you do that. So I never recommend that cheat, but that's basically an, an, an overview of what this console will give you 24 inputs, and then you will have 10 mono outputs, or you can make them into five stereo outputs. In my, in my experience, this is great for a church if they're upgrading because most churches are used to doing what they're trying to do with way less than 10 outputs. But most of the time when they're upgrading, they're upgrading because they need more outputs. And so I've made 10 outputs work in every situation I've been in, but I've always wanted more. So if a church has the budget, I always recommend something that will give that will give them more than 10 mixes right like that um like that uh soundcraft that I talked about yesterday it gives you it gives you um it gives you 14 mixes right it gives you you have 16 outputs on the back and you have 14 mixes man that's a ton that's a ton you can you can do whatever you want with 14 analog outputs to go somewhere right so there are a better mixers that have better um, better features. Right. And so, um, also on top of the 24 ins and out this mixer, it has an optional. If you look at the bottom image, right. Um, I'm sorry, I got the wrong thing on. No, you got, I got the right thing on the screen. I got too many monitors front of, in front of them. If you look at the, at the mix at the back of the mixer at the bottom middle, you're going to see two little square things that allows you to go firewire directly into a computer. What I used to use that for is I would have my Mac and I would just go firewire 
from the um, back of the mixer directly into the Mac. And then all 24 channels that were coming into the mixer, I would have that going to my to that computer for multi-track recording. That was a great feature that I liked at the time. Now it's even better with Dante. I'm not talking about Dante too much in this video. There's more information about Dante at preachandplay.com. I've just created those um, videos and I will be breaking those things down. March 1st, you'll be able to get Dante training if you're interested in that in, in the uh, Dante audio um, networking protocol if you're interested in that. But um, the Firewire was a great option, okay? Um, the pros to this to this console right now, this is an inexpensive console to buy. Let me prove it to you. Let me bring up real quick. Um, let me bring up. So when I bought it, this is what I paid years ago, years ago, man. Um, I would log into my personas account, but I don't want y'all seeing my information. Um, but you know, let's just say I've had this man. How long have I had this thing? Woo. Let's just say I've definitely had it about seven years, probably. And it's been a tank. It has given me no problems. And I paid twenty three hundred back in the day. Now that this console's older, I always recommend it to churches because now you can get it for cheap on eBay right now. If you go to eBay just right now, I just went on eBay a moment ago and I'm looking at it. So on eBay, you can find a used one um, for eight hundred and fifty dollars. Let's see how good a deal this is. Let's see if it comes with any extra features or anything. Um, let me see. Ooh, I, I, I would technically want, want something different because this one's been beat up a little bit, been used. It's, she, she's been through a little bit. They're not showing us the back. I don't think they have, um, any, ex, any expansion cards or anything plugged into the back, but eight. hundred bucks here's one for eleven hundred bucks or the best offer let's see why eleven hundred bucks let's see here so this one they got the picture sideways it looks like it was well cared for it's in a case still has a little bit of signs of use nobody's showing the back of their console i guess nobody has the dante card like i have in the back of mine but Point being, this is the point. If you're balling on a budget, you can still upgrade your your church sound for roughly. Here's one uh, with a case. Ooh, I like that. You can buy a Prasadas console and a case for about fifteen hundred bucks. Let's let's take a look at it. See what they got going here. Ah, so they got so especially if you are ministry that's mobile, here you go. You got you got you got this case alone is worth the fifteen hundred bucks. But you got the console. That's pretty nice. Been well cared for. This is this is a tremendous upgrade for many, many churches. And and so for fifteen hundred bucks, or you can make an offer, you can get a great um, upgrade um, from your older analog um, audio and what a digital console would do for you, it would allow you to begin to stream. Now you can, let's just say you have a regular mixer, right? You turn up some gain, you move some EQ, you turn it up. But when people, when people are yelling in the microphone and they're talking all loud, you don't have any compression to help control your dynamics on your older analog console. A digital console will give you compression on every single channel and the master output and on every auxiliary output. So you can kind of tame your monitor speakers. You can dial in your monitor speakers with graphic EQ on each auxiliary output. You can tame your you tune your microphones how you want them with EQ on each channel, compression, gating, 
a digital console gives you so much more in one box. And so that's the great thing about what a digital console would do for you. Yes, you're paying eight, nine, 10, 1100 bucks, but you're getting so much more. Now you're not stuck with you're running up there trying to hook something up. Somebody needs you to turn up a mic. Now you got to run back to the church, <laughs> to the back of the church, turn the mic up, mute the other ones and all this stuff. Now you go to the stage, do your thing. You have your iPad with you. Hey, turn up the drums. Bloop, bloop. There you go. Boom, you're done. That's the great thing about going ahead, going digital. COVID-19 has caught so many people off guard. So many churches want to know, how do I stream? How do I get my audio to sound good? How do I, how, how do I? Well, we got to get, we got, we need to, you can, we can use some of your older gear. Some of your situations we can turn around. But most of the time, man, let's get rid of the thing. Let's give you an upgrade. So, you know, so that we're not trying to turn water into wine. <laughs> we believe in Jesus, but we ain't him. All right. So, um, so, so, so let me look at a few other things real quickly. So, um, this is a very inexpensive upgrade for most churches. I've seen that I've seen people buy them for seven, $800. If you just keep looking, you can find one, this, this console in my, um, seven years of experience has good audio quality. When I show up with my console, it's not the best. The preamps are absolutely clean. The EQ is usable. The EQ isn't the best I've used though. Cause I work on different consoles constantly. And there are other consoles like the Behringer X32. They have Midas preamps. The EQ is slightly better. The dynamics are the compression, I feel, may be more musical, more subtle, for instance, in my experience. So there are other consoles that I'm going to show you real quick. I'm going to try not to be more than 10 more minutes. I didn't plan on being on here this long. Um, but this is a good um, church upgrade, and it has good sound quality. It has good EQ, good compression, good gate. The reason I'm saying it's good is because I use so many other consoles. Now I really see the difference. L but let me just comfort you. If you're really trying to ball on a budget and you're not trying to spend $10,000 on a digital mixer, you're not trying to spend 5,000 on a digital mixer. If you want to spend somewhere between one and 2000 on a digital mixer, this is a great one. And it's going to give you good sound quality. It's going to give you some good sound quality. And there are some things that you can do to make it sound better. But this is a good buy for most churches to upgrade. Um, it's expandable. If you fell in love with it, you can connect two of these consoles together. If you want to use if you want to expand it and use Dante, which is I've been educating everybody, everybody about Dante. I use Dante on my job. And it is absolutely awesome. Dante is, is an IP based audio protocol that can go up to 100 meters with a cat five E cable. Each cat five E cable can go up to a hundred meters. I believe that's like 300 feet. That's a pretty good distance with just cat five. It's amazing. And the sound quality Dante is great. And it's actually cleaner because everything stays in the digital domain. I, I am a believer. I'm not, I can't, I have Pro Tools HD. I have two racks right now behind me. I don't even use them no more. I'm just straight up Dante now. Um, I love Dante. It is absolutely awesome. Um, um, dot, so, so the cons, let's talk about some cons real quickly so I can get off of here. Um, the cons, this console has um, effects. It has four banks of effects. Effects A, effects B, effects C, effects D. Let me see if I can show that to you. Um, let me do this. Okay, so up here, up here, right here. Uh, what's this? This model's different than mine. What am I looking at? 
what am I looking at? 24. Oh, it's not the AI. I have the 2442 AI, but this 2442, this has two banks of effects right here. Effects A, effects B. Mine has effects A, B, C, and D. So this one's slightly different, but it's in the exact same place, okay? Point is, you can use like, you know, um, what's it called? Like um, some delay effects. You can use some delay effects. You can use reverb, like ambience. You know, you can you can make reverb A a certain type, reverb B a certain type of of reverb. Um, three, you'll make some type of delay, like a mono delay or whatever. And and four, you will use another type of delay. And so it gives you two banks of reverb and two banks of um of some type of delay. From my experience, yeah, no, I'm gonna keep it real. I ain't gonna lie to you. They suck. It does not sound good. The the reverb on here does not sound good. The only thing that I think that it may, may you may be able to use it on is some type of guitar. But I really don't like it. It's usable, but you got to use so little of it because it's so artificial. It's terrible. It's terrible. Um, another con is there are barely enough oxes for complicated setups, as you can see. And I showed you um, I showed you a moment ago. I'll show you again real quickly. Um, let me look at the back of it real quick. You only have 10 aux outputs. You can call these 10 mix outs. Your auxes one through 10 correspond directly with these outputs. You only have 10. So technically you could say 12, but that is your master fader here. So your master fader can go TRS out or here, but this XLR and this quarter inch is the exact same thing. This is a control room out. There's a knob that's something different, but you cannot you cannot create a discrete mix with this. So I don't, you can't consider this a mix right here. You only have 10 discrete mixes. And for a complicated setup, you don't you you don't have enough to do what you're trying to do. OK, so um. One con, if you guys have a really complicated setup and you're trying to go really big, I would recommend for you to do something different because your vision is higher than what this is going to do. You wouldn't go buy a Honda to run in the NASCAR. You would not do it. It's not designed. You can modify it to run fast but it still will never be what NASCAR is. And in the same way, we there's some things that we can do to do more than what this was designed to do with some sheets. But technically, it's not optimal, and I really don't recommend it, right? So, um, so let me talk quickly, in five more minutes, let me talk quickly about a few other options that you can look at. One of my favorite options, um, let me say this real quick. I work weekly with different production companies. I work with CBS, ESPN, Fox. I work with many different production companies, right? Every week when I go to work, um, there's a chance that I'm going to see the Behringer X32 on some of the smaller productions that we do. There's a chance that we'll, I'll see some Allen and Heath, some Midas, some Digico. There's all kind of things that I will see. One thing that really got me thinking is that I've been in TV. Um, my daughter is 14. I've been I've been in TV business probably 13 to 14 years. One time have I ever seen the console that I'm using. But all the time when I go to work and I'm on like a smaller, a small production, a school production or something sometimes, 
I will see something like a Behringer X32. And there are so many churches that use these Behringer X32s. Back when I was thinking about buying a digital console, I had the choice between this X32 and my Persona Studio Live. When I was playing with the X32, the faders felt cheesy. It had motorized faders. And at the time, I did not want motorized faders because I didn't want something that would break. And it felt cheesy. And so I bought this one because I thought it was more durable. I was right. But the Persona Studio Live 24.4.2 does not sound as good as the Behringer X32. The Behringer X32 sounds better. You have more features. I'm not doing a review on the Behringer X32 in this video, but I'll just tell you, if I had my choice now, I would get me a Behringer X32 over the console that I have right now, the Persona Studio Live 24.4.2. Um, so the Behringer X32 is a great option if you have the budget. So you can you can basically get one about $2,000. And so if you're going to spend $1,500 to $2,000, I'm buying an X32, period. If somebody's offering me the a Personas, the one that I have for about fifteen hundred and a Behringer X thirty two for fifteen hundred. I'm getting a Behringer X thirty two all day without even thinking about it. Even if one of the motorized faders goes bad, I'll just have to fix it. It is just a better sounding console. And I would make that decision based solely off of how it sounds. OK, bullet uh, solely off of how it sounds and some of the routing flexibility that you have with the Behringer X32. And, and, and you by default, you're going to get 16 mix outputs um, um, and not just the 10 that you would get with this Personas. OK, and so that's why. Moving forward, I recommend, depending on people's budget and depending on, you know, what they're trying to accomplish. And if 10's enough, I'll tell them this. But if 10's not enough, all day I'll tell them this. All right. But there are many other options. OK, you can go with the Midas. The Midas M32 is another very, very good console. If I had to choose now. Me personally, uh, uh, give me one second. I have a comment, everyone, I want to um, comment on. God bless you, McKaylin Simon. How well does it work for a lot? My, um, so my, um, my, um, my, uh, Personas, my Personas, if you're referring to my Personas 24, it works well. It is, and I quote, good. You see on the pros, I say good sound quality, good EQ compression gate. Real quick, I will tell you this. If you're interested in having a live stream console, especially if you can get a Personas 24 live for cheap, it would be good. It would be good, especially if you if the, if you have if it's only for live stream. So 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 let, so let me qualify this statement real quick, McKaylin, because there's different schools of thoughts. If your Personas Studio Live 24 is the console that is actively mixing what is in the church, right? It's mixing what's in the church and it's the console for the live stream. You can still do that well. It's not, it's not optimal, but it will still be good. And I'll explain why. Let me bring something on the screen. So let's just pretend that right now, I'm talking in the church and you see me selecting the main right here. We are looking at the main um, mix, right? And, and, and so when I was at the church, this is what the people heard. But when, but when we were streaming, Ox 9 and 10 was going to the live stream. And so it was real easy to have a pre-fader mix. No matter what happened in the congregation, if I brought Black Mike down, it works well for a live stream because the pre-fade, I can be here and the black mic can be 
up on my live stream. So so the pre-fader deal doesn't matter. The green means that it's up in the house, but I see that it's that, you know, I mean, it's up in the um, somewhere else, but it's down in the house. Right. So it works well for that. The sound quality, however, when you are mixing the congregation and the live stream on the same console, many people don't realize why that's not optimal. It's not optimal because all of your EQ on the channel is being EQ'd for how it sounds in the room. So what if your room isn't balanced and you're adding too much bass or you're taking too much out? That is what's going to your live stream. That's why it's always optimal to have a front of house mixer and a stage mixer and a mixer for the live stream because everybody is getting the independent um is everybody's getting the sources independently and they're controlling what they have independently and so the reason i wanted to separate those it works good if the personas is the church mixer also the live stream it works good you just got to make sure that in those 24 channels you keep some room mics so because the room mics is really where the live stream will really sound the best because when you just have like a regular mic going straight turning that up it sounds too dead it sounds too close i don't care how much you eq and all that stuff you need room mics right so it does work well for that it depends on your situation most people have one mixer controlling the monitors i have that one mixer controlling the monitors and the live stream in a situation like that, it still works well. But it's also great because if your church is already digital and you're already using something like Dante, one cat five cable into the network. And now you got all the sources directly to this console. And now you got your own EQ compression and all that stuff. And then absolutely it works well there as well. So, Thank you for your question, McKaylin Simon. Amen. Thank you for your question. Um, let me um, close this thing up. So, uh, oh, that's what I was doing. Let me show you guys real quickly some other options as well. Let's just show some some price things. Um, um, here we go. Let me hide that. Bring this on the screen. All righty. So the Midas M32 I have a friend. Um, what's up, Jason? If you're watching, he just bought this. Um, the, 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 the Midas console, let me tell you, I have the privilege. I have the privilege to work on some, 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 you know, $500,000 Calrex. Um, also I have the privilege to work on some $5,000 Midas's $7,000 consoles, $10,000. For the money, last week I was on a Soundcraft SI Performer, and I'm going to show you that. Let me pull that up as well, and I'm just going to do a quick comparison. I like that picture. I'm going to keep that right there, and then I'm going to look for that over here. Hang on. Let me type that in. Soundcraft. Soundcraft Performer 3. I was on this console last week. Uh, yeah, I was on this console last week. The Soundcraft Perfor Performer is a $6,000 console. I really like it. It's, it's intuitive. It's laid out simply. It kind of feels analog in a way because everything is on the surface. Everything is right there, but this thing is, whoops, this thing is almost $7,000. The situation that I, that I was in, every time that I'm on this console, I'm always in a very noisy environment, so I can't brag on the sound quality like I want to, but for, let's just say almost $7,000 compared to almost, where'd it go? To compare to almost six, to almost a four or five thousand dollars, man, this Midas. I'm trying to tell you, the if you have the budget, 
I would rather wait and save up and get this Midas. I'm just a fan. I am just in love with the design. I'm in, I'm in love with the preamps. I'm in love with the headroom. The Midas is a very, very, very awesome console. Um, um, I just love it. I can't speak well enough of it. Feature set. Um, you have, you can see you have all, you got, I see the 16, um, outputs over there. And then I see a, a couple more aux outs over there. You know, it, it's just, you got plenty of ins, you got plenty of outs. Uh, there's just so many options. This Midas for five grand. If there's a church that wants to upgrade, if you can, if you can do it, man, I'm trying to tell you this Midas is an awesome, awesome console. I've worked on it multiple times. I've worked on the Yamaha CL fives. Let me pull that up for you. Let me pull that up. Hang on. Yamaha CL five multiple times UT University of Knoxville in their control room. Yes, I'm telling it. They have a Yamaha QL5. And so if you ever watch uh, the UT Vols and the school is producing it, you are hearing a Yamaha QL5. Um, come on here. I didn't go where I wanted to go. But the Yamaha CL5, QL5, they are also good consoles as well. So I'm not going to um, um, talk your ear off about this. I basically wanted to talk about um, a brief overview of the Personas. Personas is, is at the bottom of my list. It is an entry level console. In, tw in, in 2021, there are so many older consoles that are better and there are many newer consoles that are worth saving up and buying over this. But if you need something now, you can find this cheap. Uh, I don't like the word cheap. You can you can find this inexpensively um, and it will give you good quality for your live stream mix or for your front of house monitor and live stream. However you want to do it. But there are many other options and in the two thousand dollar range. You'll find that Prasonis or you also find this Behringer X32 um, you will, um, those are two great options, uh, for a little bit more. You can go with that Midas, go with that Midas M32, or for a little bit more, the Soundcraft SI Performer. Now the SI Performer, there's three models. We'll talk about that in a, in another, uh, version. But the reason that I'm saying the version three, in my experience, I believe version three is the big brother of the one and the two. So I've only worked on the three. Um, it's bigger, more faders, more layers, all that stuff. So I really like this one and the CL five and the QL five. Of course, Yamaha stuff has been historically good. Um, this is a good sounding console. I, I'm not to be honest in my years of working on these, Yamaha CL5 is more expensive than the X32, but I don't know why. Because I don't hear a few thousand dollars more in the price. You know, I don't I don't hear why it's worth more. You know what I'm saying? So um that's all the time I have tonight, you guys. I've been on here longer than I wanted to. Um, this has just been a, a quick audio a church audio tip to it to break down to you guys if you're trying to get into the digital audio game so that you can stream so that you can upgrade from your older analog Mackie your old analog PV your whatever audio and if you're tired of being stuck at the back of the church just so you can mute unmute if you want to be able to give the drummer an app on his cell phone to control what's in his headphones if you want to liberate yourself and walk around the church with your laptop or your iPad, if you want to do some multi-track recording, if you want to start recording rehearsals easy, if you want to get a, 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 a better sounding mix in the room, I'm trying to tell you, you got to get in the digital game. You have to get in the digital game. And we are often training at our website at preachandplay.com. At preachandplay.com, I'm a pastor 
helping pastors. I'm a musician helping musicians, and I am a media professional helping media volunteers. I'm all three, baby, and I'm trying to help you be all you can be, okay? So God bless you, man. Uh, let me get off of here. I'm going to get me some rest. Again, I have a lot of recording to do tomorrow, so I'll probably go live again Wednesday with some music tutorials. Hope you guys check that out. On March the 1st, we are releasing our How to Live Stream series and our media series. We are breaking down Dante audio um, networking tutorials. We're breaking down OBS tutorials, how to do OBS, how to, I don't think I still have Pro Presenter open, but how to um, bring scriptures on the screen, how to, you know, um, how to stream, stream to Zoom and to OBS at the same time. Sorry, I just opened up Pro Presenter and it made everything click and flash. But uh, if you if you want to um, if you want to be able to bring the Bible on the screen, you can do it. You can do it quick, fast, and in a hurry. You should be able to do this at your church. You should be able to 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 uh, create the background. I'm gonna answer your question in one second, Michaelin. You should be able to do all these things. Pro presenter is the lick. We're breaking down. We're breaking down practical um, um, lessons because there's so much free information out there. It's hard to really build a content channel around information when you can get so much content already. But um, we're giving you the practical things. How to get something that look like this. How to get some things like this to come up on the screen, how I'm doing it so quickly and easily, how to switch with the press of a button, how to bring graphics on, how to, how to, how to. That's what we're doing. Real quick, also, I haven't said this all day. My bad, I forgot. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you, you subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'm Casper Corden. We are Preach and Play. I'm a preacher, so I'm going to preach. If you don't like preaching, you're not going to like me. I'm just telling you up front. If you don't like music, you're not going to like me because I'm a musician. And if you don't like nerdy topics, you're not going to like me because I'm a nerd and I am a media professional. I'm all those things, right? And so that's what you're going to get with me. But you will get what you're looking for, I promise you, okay? So the last question of the night, Michaela and Simon says, uh, we're basically using a, a mixed and an amp. A, a, a mixer and an amp so it is best to just get a guy to come and set it up so okay i think i understand what you're saying so 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 y'all are basically using a mixer and an amp so um hit me up man so i consult i do installations um if you guys are wanting to ball on a budget i can teach you how to do it we have a training course that every installation that we do, every media team that we train, we give them access to the website and to our media library. So in their time, they can do their homework. Go learn OBS. Go learn Pro Presenter. Go learn, go learn, go learn so that you can graduate. You won't need me anymore. Now you're running it, right? So if you need someone to come set that up, boom, we'll help you out. But uh, where are you from, man? Uh where are you from? You're not from America, are you? Where are you from? So last question, we're basically using a mixed. I think you were saying we're basically using a mixer and an amp. So it so maybe you're saying, so is it best to just get a guy to come in and set it up? Oh, so you're in LA. So I think I I think I know what you was trying to say, fam. So yes. Um, it just depends on on your tech if you're on your on your uh, situation hit me up man um hit me up sometime you are if you're in la i don't know if that's louisiana or los angeles lake charles la um lake charles la i don't know if that's louisiana or los angeles if you're in louisiana i'm in central standard time so you can do the time zone difference hit me up the the number is on our website www.preachandplay.com Man, I wonder how far I'm going to be from you. I'm going to be I'm going to be kind of close soon. Uh I'm going to research in a minute to see how far I'm going to be from you. And uh maybe I can come through and 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 see what's happening. But yeah. 
there's a few things we're going to need to get you set up. So, um, yeah, we'll have a conversation because you just can't say you're streaming. How are you streaming? You streaming from a cell phone? You streaming from a camera? Are you using Streamlabs OBS? Are you using the, the original version, the other version of OBS? Are you, there's, man, there's a thousand ways to skin a cat, man. So, um, love, love to have a conversation with you. You can break down what you're doing. And I also got some people that are in Louisiana that might be able to get to you quicker and help you out. So hit me up, man. I know some parfaits. They, they right down, they around the corner from you. They can uh, come through Facebook live with an iPhone. Yeah. So yeah, you got an iPhone. So you're probably getting the audio from the iPhone or you're using that. What's that little device? Everybody using, uh, whatever it's called. I don't use one, but anyway, I see your setup. Yeah. That's extremely down and dirty. If that's, if that's what you want to do, cool. If you want to get better, we can get you better. You just got to have someone to run it. Okay. And, uh, and so, and we have a series right now that is breaking down how to get video into your computer, how to mix the audio. We're breaking all that stuff. Let me ask you a quick question real quick. And then I'm gonna leave you alone. What type of mixer you say you're using a mixer. Do you know the type of mixer you're using? Because if you're using an iPhone, you're probably just um, that iPhone is just ambiently picking up the the service through um, through the through the WhatsApp face. Unless you are using what's that doggone device called? Everybody's using. Um, I see it. Anyway, anyway, but yeah, just hit me up, man. Hit me up, man. This this whole text thing be slow. But uh, okay, I believe it's a Behringer. Okay, so if if it's digital, you have a Behringer X32. If it's not digital, you probably got that Behringer MX3282, that big analog thing. Or you may have like a little silver Behringer. I got two little silver Behringers over in the closet. So, um, yeah, who knows? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, man. Um, well, God bless y'all, man. Um, thank you guys for checking us out. And again, this has just been a, a brief overview of the 24 of the of the Persona Studio Live 24 2 AI. I, again, I use this. Oh, OK, uh, I think I know exactly what you got. Hang on. got something like this you either got something like this or you got uh i got another one in there yeah this little thing right here man you can't do too much with it um you can't do too much with it at all you can get by and do some things but uh you can't do too much i actually recently took this apart cleaned it and uh showing people how to clean there are uh, things. Um, I got one or two more in there. Man, I got so me and my boy Greg, we got so much equipment it don't make no sense. But uh, yeah, man, I got also I got a Euro rack in there, uh, a little small like eight channel. I probably got the one you got, man. But uh, yeah, I know what you're working with. Um, yeah, man, we need to upgrade you. We need to upgrade you, man, so y'all can um, y'all can uh, do your thing better. So hit me up, man. I'd love to hear more about your setup and what y'all are doing and what you guys are trying to accomplish. And we definitely can help make y'all better. And trust me, you don't have to, you, you don't have to, um, it's not going to cost you a million dollars. You don't, you don't have to spend money like that to be great. We just need to ask some questions, see what you guys are trying to do and we can get y'all tightened up okay hit me up when you get a second man visit the website www.preachandplay.com my phone number is at the top of the screen hit us up man uh, text me or give me a call anytime leave me a message and i'll call you back send me an email we'll communicate and i'll be in louisiana actually um uh, really soon man so um maybe i'll maybe i'll, I'll get an opportunity to, to swing through if i'm close okay but God bless you, everybody. This has been another produ production of the preachandplay.com. 
Again, thank you for tuning in. Please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and we will see everyone on next time, okay? God bless you, everyone. Everyone have a great, great night, okay? God bless.